Welcome back to another video for Keeling Geometry. Uh, tonight we continue with our discussions about circles. And the first thing I want to cover is the word circumference. And many of you have talked about circumference when we're talking about the perimeter of a circle. And indeed, that is the perimeter of a circle is called the circumference. Also, the circumference of the circle, I used it in the last video, is that path that we make when we are using our compass. So there's two mathematical definitions for circumference, at least, right? All right, and I have three circles here, three different circumferences, three different diameters. And yes, there is a relationship between a diameter and a circumference, of course, right? Larger the diameter, the larger the, the circumference, right? Um, we, when we uh, were looking for um, a relationship between those two, um, long ago, people were trying to figure out if we could figure out the circumference and, and try to measure it in a relationship with the radius. And that was trying to make a square or something that was easier to measure than that curved surface, right? Because the curved surface becomes a problem. We have to use a string or do something and stretch it out. Um, and it was very difficult to try to make a square that had the same perimeter as a circle, no matter what I did, you know, with the, with the radius. And what they've discovered was that if I took the circumference of a circle and I divided it by the di diameter, it came up to be a value which seemed consistent. Yeah, if you take the circumference divided by the diameter and, it, and that value, well, what do you think it turned out to be? It turned out to be a little more than three times as big, yes? And we know that value now as pi. Um, we cannot, cannot ever find the end of pi. It's a transcendental number, and it never repeats, never ends, and no matter what you try to do, it can't you can't find it, right? So, um, for our purposes, the word, if someone asks you what is pi, you will tell them that it is the circumference of a circle divided by its diameter, right? Because that's what it is. There is an approximation for pi. Notice I use this symbol for approximation. I like 3.14159, that way, if I'm using five digits, there, if there's any rounding going on, I am going to be covered, right? 3.14 is a little bit small for me, right? Uh, I don't need the 10 digits or the 100 digits that some of you know. Let's just use uh, five decimal places, yes? Okay, for our circumference conjecture, we're gonna say if C is the circumference and D is the diameter of a circle, then there is a number pi such that the circumference is equal to pi times d. Now, how did I get that? Well, what I did is circumference divided by diameter is pi, and of course, if I multiply both sides by diameter, right, that would be equal to pi d, or as I show, showed on this slide, uh, usually lowercase d. Pi. Now, we don't always talk about the circumference in terms of the diameter. We could also talk about it in terms of the radius because two radii would be equal to the, to the diameter. So C could also equal to two pi r. And that's the other formula that most of us know. Fantastic. Now, um, Let's do a problem. If I tell you the circumference of a circle is equal to, let's say, 24 inches. Now we know that circumference is equal to pi d, right? 
and we can say that 24 is equal to pi d. So the diameter would be equal to 24 divided by pi. And guess what? That is an acceptable answer. As a matter of fact, that is the exact answer. That is not rounded because if I try to put a value in for pi, which you know there is no value that's going to be exact enough, uh, I am going to round. At this point, I am rounding and everything, I mean, excuse me, I am exact and that's as far as I can go. I can't do anything to it. So that's the answer. Now, if I round it, I'm going to change my symbol. And in this case, it would be somewhere, if we, let's go to the hundredth place, about 3.82. So if I ask for an exact answer, that means in terms of pi. Okay? All right. Let's move on. Moving on to arc length. Now, arc length just by itself is defined as the length along a curve. That easily, okay? You can do a lot of very complicated mathematics to find the arc length, um, but what we're gonna do is find the arc length of a circle, which keeps it a little bit easier. So, I have a circle C with a central angle of 88 degrees and arc AB. Now, we know that the measure of arc AB is equal to 88 degrees. Arc length is the measurement from point A to point B. And I will always, always go the shortest distance If, it's, if there's two points given, right? If I wanna go around the long way, I have to have another point and say like A something B, go, go around this way. So if I want to find the arc length, this is the measure along the curve, okay? Arc length. Of AB, arc AB. The way we find that is where we need some portion of the circumference, right? Well, the circumference is 2 pi r. We just did that, right? That's 2 pi r. That's easy. Now, we also need what portion of it? Well, the portion of it is just that much Right there, you know, I want not 360 degrees of it, not 180, I just want 88 degrees. I want some fraction of the circumference. And of course, I multiply the circumference times, right, what fraction? I multiply it by 88 over 360. Now, I did one thing incorrect, because you can't, unless I tell you the radius, there's no way that you're gonna find what the circumference is, right? Not in this case. Uh, so let's say this is two inches. Now we can find the arc length, right? Okay, so the circumference is two pi times two inches multiplied by 88 over 360 degrees. And this is going to be the arc length. And another symbolic way of writing arc length is you write the two endpoints and you put the arc over it. Notice that it's a little bit, just slightly different than the arc measure. So this is the arc length. This is the arc measure. This one's going to be in degrees. This one is going to be uh, in units of length. Like in this case, it's going to be inches. All right. Very small difference, but a total different answer. Okay, and I don't need to bore you, of course, this was gonna be like, this is four pi, this is 88 over 360, I could, uh, I can divide those by, uh, I can divide them by four, right? 
Um, so that's uh, what 22 over 90 and I can use my calculator and figure all that out and I do want you to simplify that down this will turn out to be something like uh, what 44 over 45 I think yep and pi and that once again is my exact answer which I love. I love exact answers. I don't like to round unless I have to. Okay, so let's look at our conjectures for today. Uh, an arc length of conjecture. Okay, we're going to say that the length of an arc in a circle is the product of the measure of the central angle divided by 360 and the circumference of the circle. And I will write that this way. I'm going to write it, your arc length. So I am going to say something like this. I'm going to say theta over 360 times 2 pi r. And if you want, is equal to the arc length. If you want to put pi d, that's fine. Yes, I did use a symbol here, theta, t-h-e-t-a. That is a Greek letter also, which is commonly used for angle measurements. And uh, so we will say uh, where theta is the measure of the intercepted arc. Yeah, okay. Not too bad at all today. Last thing I want you to do is to look at a problem for you. Uh, I've got a little check for understanding problem. In, a, in 1873, the Jules Verne no novel Around the World in 80 Days was published. What would be the average speed necessary to accomplish this feat if we assume the Earth's diameter to be 8,000 miles? Please state your answer in the nearest uh, hundredth mile per hour. Okay. One little problem that will be on your um, video check, and I think that you can do that. You can check with your uh, peers and make sure to get the same answer, and please show your work, right? Okay, see you next time.